The following podcast may contain some adult language. You've been warned. This is a show dedicated to the Genesis role-playing system created by Fantasy Flight Games and produced by Edge Studio, a show in which we, your hosts, discuss all things Genesis from both the player's and a GM's perspective. As always, I'm Tony Fanning, and with me are my good friends and co-hosts, Chris Holmes and Stefan Dragonspawn. Homie, how you been, brother? Well, um, <clears throat> the fact that I'm over COVID, <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> and, and, um... Yeah, that's really all I got to say about that. I'm just great. I'm glad I'm able to taste my food, especially the steak that I just made tonight. Um, and I'd like to especially thank the uh, listeners out there who, when we canceled our last show, expressed on Facebook and Twitter uh, concern for your health. Uh, we didn't say Aww. which host was sick, but um, <laughs> they were they were very uh, gracious putting you in their thoughts and prayers. So, yeah. oh, thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. That probably more than likely helped me um, get better. Yeah. So <laughs> awesome. How about, okay, Stefan, how you doing, man? Well, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I, I was one of those concerned uh, for you, but I'm glad you were you were on the bend. Yeah. So um, no, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, just a quiet holiday. We're recording this, uh, you know, Boxing Day and the day after Christmas. Um, quiet holiday here uh, after the mad uh, rush of work. Uh, in retail uh, where I work, so <laughs> I suppose so. Yep, is the season definitely. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of people are buying up all their bubbly and all the other liquors that uh, they need to celebrate and to be able to uh, endure their fa- being around their family. I need Fireball. <laughs> yeah, <The> fucking liquor <laughs> store was out <laughs> down oh. the road where I normally get it. Damn it! <laughs> it's actually made in Ontario. Actually, I didn't, I didn't know that. It's made up here in Canada. Fantastic. How you doing, Tony? Yeah, yeah. What about you? Oh, not bad. Been uh, enjoying my new monitor. Got a big old 35-inch wraparound monitor that I've been playing a hell, uh, hell a load of video games on. You said wraparound. Uh, yeah. Oh, reach around. Wraparound? No, wraparound. One of wraparound. the curved okay. monitors. Better. Yeah. It's not a reach around, that's for sure. That that would be my monitor. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, I've just been playing a lot of video games, relaxing at home, uh, spent the holiday at home with the wife, watching movies and chilling out, just the two of us, no kids, no grandkids. It was kind of quiet. So mm. awesome. It's good stuff. Yep. Well, I'm looking forward to our show and we are doing episode 93, our year in review, living on the edge of next year. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so let's get on to it. What? All right. Well, here we are to boost the signal. Um, boosting the signal where Stefan shares some ha genesis news fresh off the wire from the edge studio section of the drive through rpg web page um stefan what you got for us yes thank you chris so uh yeah uh, hello again the fellow gamers it's been a little while uh since my last little segment uh and this is the last one of the year and this time I want to focus on something, a series of Genesis products that someone named Emlyn Freeman uh, created, uh, entitled Infinity's Rising. Uh, there are multiple little products here, uh, but it's, they're pretty much all the same. They're, they each focus on a certain genre, whether they're Westerns, Supers, or Pulp, and it's basically characters stats that uh, they pre-made. Uh, you've got the them in, in a form of 
character sheet, but also little character cards. So if you want to print them on smaller cards, a bit like the adversary cards that uh, they printed for Android and Realms of Tyrannoth a while back. Uh, usually they're two to six uh, characters pre-generated um, of art with you know, various archetypes, whether various humans or elves, etc. Careers, the talent trees, uh, skills and gear, and they're ready to play, you know, without any additional work. Or you can simply modify them, uh, tweak them a little bit, and they vary from uh, one ninety nine to four ninety nine. So I've included uh, a link in the show notes for at least some of the products, but you you and you'll be able to find the other ones uh, as well. And uh, so, yeah, it, it can be very useful for uh, for whatever setting you're you're playing. So, if you need some characters for a sci-fi cyberpunk, they've got some of that as well. Um, like I said uh, some androids and robots, whatever uh, westerns. And so they, they look pretty good, uh, well written, and clear and concise. So. Go ahead and uh, check uh, Emlyn's uh, products, Infinities Rising. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I must say that you know, I, you know, after buying those uh, first time I used these character cards was in Star Wars RPG. Running that mm -hmm. when they started putting those out, you know, you want a generic gangster or black market. Oh dealer or whatever boom just pull out the card you got them right there if you want them a little more you know charismatic or whatever a little better presence than what's on the card just bump it up a little bit just right you know on the fly but you yep. have the basic things there and man those so handy so handy now the fact that there's only one to six of them i don't know but again i think sometimes it's just priceless when you just kind of grab something and Pull it well, up that's it. Whenever, yeah, you know. sometimes there are not too many. Like, there's one that caught my eye was the ones called the Wizarding World, which is mm -hmm. basically it has only two characters. It's pretty cool, of course, inspired by the Harry Potter series. So you've got the the broom ace <laughs> <laughs> and the student wizard. The <laughs> broom <laughs> ace. Oh, that's yeah. So we can definitely know where they got inspired from that. So, that's cool. uh, uh, yeah, but sometimes you just need a couple of characters, but there's some books that there are multiples of like uh, for sci-fi stuff you might there might be two or three of those uh, that they made so you can have quite a few characters if they're on average you know four or five characters per book still gives you about you know 12 or, or something uh, on average uh, characters that you don't have to to create really they're already there cool mm -hmm. yeah so there you go i hope that uh, helps out uh emlyn and uh their products and uh, helps the fellow GMs uh, out there uh, you know, spend more time on their story and less on uh, prepping some uh, characters. And hello, everybody. Welcome to the Books of Genesis. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is where we are um doing our 2021 year in review and then we're looking into the future into our crystal balls future future we have future. Long, there's three of us we must have three balls <laughs> 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 and um yeah that's basically what we're gonna do so um we're gonna kick it off with um what episode did we start off with? We started out the what year that? with episode 74. Yeah, that was my, not. yeah, that was the actual play, the Speed Buggy Invitational actual play, where we followed yeah. that up with that two-part vehicle creation series, kind of themed it in a way. And we yeah. had Matt Stark on. Fuck, that was fun. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was playing yep. Space Ghost. He was playing Space Ghost. <laughs> Who do we have? You, had, you were playing Jabberjaw. Yeah. And I think Stefan, you were playing. You were playing a uh, snag, a uh, snaggletooth, snagglepuss. Right? Indubitably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> yeah, I had Velma Dinkley out there in the on that yeah. course waiting for Jabberjaw when he came by to fuck him up a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and then of uh, course Quick Draw McGraw, I was shipping yeah. Quick Draw baby and Snagglepuss. <laughs> mm-hmm. That that part I loved. Like, okay, he's playing up to the Snagglepuss uh, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then I think I, I had I had created some rules, some special rules for. Now this was now I brainstormed this 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 um these things with my daughter Alexi because she plays a lot of video games. She's like, why don't you do like power ups? Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's great. You know, like when you're you know so Mario we had Kart some, type stuff. Mario yeah. Kart kind of well, stuff. Hit some power ups and yeah, speed boosts and uh, I think, weapons. I think, was, I think it was pretty fun. Your your buggies yeah. weren't worth a shit, and when you're coming over the finish line i was if i remember right for sure i was running across the finish line carrying you might, mine yeah. with your bumper oh. out front <laughs> right or something i don't know uh, that was a lot gosh. of fun that was yep. a lot of fun yeah. um yeah yeah that and then the vehicle two-part vehicle creation series where we broke into the um the expanded players guide and went through uh-huh. that whole section broke it down and really dove into that. That was a lot of fun for me because deep dive, know, you know yeah. the the Genesis vehicle mechanics are can seem very daunting at first, but when you really just dive into it and you see it in action and you use them, uh, they're actually pretty simple. Yeah, uh, they're pretty straightforward. And when, you, and, and when you simplify them, the chase rules one of the hard to do chases in really any any rpg mm-hmm. it is and it is and genesis does it well not uber awesome but i think it does it well and fun enough for yeah. me mm-hmm. you know and even in the star wars system which is you know the narrative dice system right <clears throat> um when you've run those in star wars too tony um i think it's great i think there's there's fun. ways to tweak those rules that make it individual to the situation uh and or uh you can like you did where you put in a bunch of individual ways to spend advantage and triumph and threats and despairs um and the the individual story point pools and oh that's right i did that didn't i i I didn't have i did not have a gm story point you were using them against each other and moving them between your pools oh that's right Right. okay that was kind of cool yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah, if you're able to use one against, so able to once once your opponent had a story point, you could then attack them or affect them. I forget the the exact. It's been a while, but yeah, there was a yeah, condition. Was... You can't you can't affect your your your, your, your 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 competition until you've done something with the story points. Yeah, it was it was something. Mm-hmm. It was pretty fun though. That yep. was pretty. Then we went into. Um, my actual play, which was the uh, the first of our mini campaign series, uh, which was the Primordial Machina, of the Crying Sky. Now, you guys both played in that. How how did you guys enjoy that? Oh, I loved it. Oh, I liked I that one. I think yeah. I was playing I was playing the prof- the Richter uh, the professor in that one. the archaeologist Richter the Coffee. archaeologist Richter yeah. Coffee baby. Oh, yeah. professor, yeah. Not much of a fighter. He's a mentalist, man. Right. <laughs> well, that's okay. Sean that's really. Cool. So go ahead. I know Sean really enjoyed it because he got to play old seventy seven, which is one of the characters he helped make. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, and like he totally, totally loved it. Yep. yep. You had fun there. And even though uh, Coffee wasn't a combat specialist, that's that's why Zandra was there. She could take up the slack. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. And old seventy seven was quite a uh, quite a combat specialist as well. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, just niche, but still very very effective. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And then we followed then, up we followed up that actual play with the secret of the moon door going into the primordial machina, pri- prim- primeval tool. I mean, <laughs> that I ran. Um, right. That was the fifth edition module that i converted to genesis and um we had a couple of pauses between that one that didn't quite get its legs all the way but uh i don't know that was what do you guys think of that one 
Go ahead, Stefan. Well, despite the pauses, I mean, things happen, real life happens, but yeah. uh, no, I had a lot of fun. My character uh, fleshed him out. I was trying to get him uh, fleshed out a little bit, maybe finding uh, finding his own legs and uh, the reason in the story. But his place in the story at the beginning, it was all m- much more investigative and uh, asking questions. He, he wasn't uh, very uh, social, let's say, uh, that was in his forte. But later on, he was much more in his element. So that's uh, it all balanced out. But he, uh, I was still able to uh, to be very effective and follow along and just focus in on the role play and help out the others if I could. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had that. I had that. And I knew that was going to happen. I knew there was the investigation up front, which I mm-hmm. thought Tony's character shined a yeah. bit up front with that to start yeah, it with. It was a bit, of a, a bit outside of my toolbox playing a priest. I don't normally play morally straightforward characters. My characters are not normally seeing things black and white. That's just the way I've always been as a player. I usually play more middle of the alignment spectrum type mm-hmm. folks, you know, not people who see the world Ray through an area. absolute lens. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was uh, it was a challenge for me at first <clears throat> to play uh, the priest with the rigid belief system. But at the end, it made for a very, uh, very unique ending. To the- yes, <laughs> it did. Yes, it did. I had a whole had a whole other well world if you will <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're gonna go through if you went through the door but you didn't and so that was um that was pretty that was pretty cool now let me here's a question for you tony so playing this black and white morals kind of character i know that's that that's more of a um <clears throat> a choice you could really do it in any system mm-hmm. right but was there anything about Genesis that made that particularly easier to do, harder to do, or the primeval fool setting that allowed you to do it, make it easier or harder for you? What do you think? I don't, I don't think it was a setting thing for me, just as stepping outside of my comfort zone as far as player character goes. Okay. It wasn't uh, – I'm sure if I had been playing something in, say, a 5e where it's a codified alignment system, um, that would have been easier because you have the guidelines of the codified alignment system to to point, and you also have established large amounts of content on specific orders in those worlds. Yeah. Uh, you know, pages and sometimes books of content on an individual organization uh, that you would belong to. Whereas this, with the Guardians of the Nine that I belong to, and the Church of Tarhun, very small amount of lore in one book yeah. um the player's guide um for both organizations so there was a lot of ability to fill in the blanks which i think genesis gives you the opportunity to do on your own as a player um right but uh, I, because there isn't a rigid alignment system in genesis imposing one upon oneself is very easily done to be honest yep. and in that setting in primeval thule you know there's this like for instance like slaves slavery trade there's like a whole city that's just that's what it's built on that's mm-hmm. it's economy right it's like a conan-esque yes primal type of world right yeah. and had taken that black and white good versus evil stance that your character did would pretty up in a world like that where there is yeah. that gray morality if you will throughout There's, so that's fortunately cool. you did a real good job of not having me face it on a daily basis so well <laughs> not so much but the choice that was put to you at the very end i enjoyed mm-hmm. that and gave you a couple weeks to think about it <laughs> right all right so where'd we go from there Stefan? well we also did another deep dive into the, uh, the spotlights of uh, the settings uh, with Monster World. Oh, yeah, that's right. We talked about that. That's one of the ones from the uh, Expanded Player's Guide, if I remember correctly. Those are last yep, one, I think, it. that we had to do. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we reviewed that, talked about all the, uh, that, like, that kind of setting, uh, the various creatures that could be uh, part of that. 
And then uh, cooking up a setting, we follow that up with a two-part cooking up a setting. We're using, uh, again, the Expanded Player's Guide to create a brand new setting from the ground up, basically a, a, a world which gave all three of us some really weird results, trying to <laughs> wrap, wrap our brains around, okay, well, I know one of you had this weird mechanical brass world. Uh, Get out of me. Yeah. Oh, I had fuck, a weird, weird world of Roman level technology, but they've got two different, like the frontier and the main capital. Uh, I don't know. It was all <laughs> acid trip inducing kind of thing. <laughs> Definitely quite random. Yeah. 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 Not, that, not that we, we advocate really... using drugs, of course. <laughs> uh, and then we yeah. jumped into uh, one of your favorite tones, homie. Oh, yeah. Heist, man. Heists and the, the noir tone as well. That's kind of cool where you're the detective and whatever you have talk. You have your own internal monologue or whatever, but the heists, oh, love, love a good heist. Love and I still think the perfect heist. number of players for a noir game is two, believe it or not. Like a, like a pair of investigators looking into um, something. That's just the perfect number of players for a noir setting. Um, when you get into larger groups, I don't think Noir handles it as well, in my opinion. But two to three. Yeah, it kind of goes. Yeah, the two kind of goes with that whole, you know, you're like a part, you know, you got like your partner, your two detectives working a case or whatever it might be. Right. right. Yeah. OK. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. And then we uh, we did a deep dive into the weapons on armor creation rules for uh, Secrets of the Crucible using the Keyforge book. Yeah, split and, that into two shows, two separate shows for that. I mean, we well, yeah. we we were going through the weapon one, and then we're like, yeah, let's yeah. stop here. Let's do the <laughs> let's do the <laughs> armor. Yeah. Let's do a separate show for the armor. It's that was one where we almost bit off more than we could chew in one a show. A little bit, <laughs> exactly. A little bit. Yeah. 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 But and, and, uh, and, and I really those, enjoyed those... building the weapons that we did. You know, the the example mm-hmm. we did the ZF one from from Fifth Element for the gun. And then right. we just the, bought uh, that movie, by the way, the other day. I'm like, uh, going through Voodoo, we'll look at, oh, yeah, Fifth Element. And the first thing that I thought of was that fucking weapon that we made here. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to yep. watch that scene again in the context of the entire movie. So, That's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. we did the uh, Iron Man Mark I yes. suit. Yep. For, for the, the armor. Uh, for the armor. Yeah. And and these and you know granted and, and these and like we we probably said it in the show but I'll re, I'll reiterate it in both shows I'll re I'll restate it here um, even those these creation rules are from the Crucible the secrets of the Crucible the Keyforge setting you can lift and pull these and put them in any your own setting or anything yeah. else you could create use these to create new ones for like if you want to in your uh, what is it. Um, uh, Shadow of the Beanstalk, right? Yeah, new experimental you know, weapon that uh, yeah, uh-huh. company came up with. Yeah, doesn't have to be Keyforge, or you know, you could do it in your you know underwater shark men um, world that Tony created. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that was yours, right? You had like that the the maw, the great maw, and mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I remember, I remember. <laughs> It was fucky. Yeah. <laughs> well, but. <laughs> yeah. What oh, else did boy. we have, Stefan? What was the, what was our last topic well, we did throughout the year? The topic was uh, a listener uh, request. Oh, that's right. Um, and it was basically uh, Genesis on easy mode. What could be done to... Uh, to get, mm-hmm. let's say, kids or simply adults that are new to the hobby or new to Genesis, to get them interested, you know, to ease them in, kind of thing, without you know overwhelming them with all the uh, the new rules and different rules and just numbers and the di- and the narrative dice. So that was uh, one of our last topics for 2021, which was kind of cool. Thank you. Yeah, that uh, was a good one. That's thank you, Travis, show. for uh, for that subject. Yeah, and we actually had um, we actually had some good listener feedback came up on Facebook that uh, we'll we'll read later when we go through our listener feedback uh, from that episode uh, that I would like to share. Um, okay. That came from uh, I think it was from Terry Hansen, and um, 
just thought I'd share. Uh, we could share that now, but I'm not finding it, so we could share it later at the end of the show. We yeah, we, okay. we'll, look, we'll look for it. And, okay. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I had also boosted the signal to our to our friends there, uh, Corey and uh, Jennifer Judd, who did our uh, our dice bags and dice trays. Oh yes, uh, the our, dice bags. Our, oh. Yeah, with our logo, uh, our, uh, our own logo. So if you want one, you can hit them up. Uh, look for the contact information there, or hit them up if they, if you want a custom dice bag. They can make all kinds of custom jobs. That's right. Cool. Well, and yeah. we did have a bit. Now, we did have some new Genesis stuff come out this year, although we were hoping to get mm -hmm. something that kind of fl just kind of flitted out of our grasp. Yes. The last minute. <laughs> I don't even think it was really necessarily in our grasp. I don't even think it was no. anywhere near our grasp, to be honest no, with you. It was on the horizon, but it, then it dipped down mm. below the horizon again. It was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. It was a shadow on the horizon. <laughs> yep. yep. Maybe. It was, just, it was just a little bit. In the, we just saw it in the twilight. Yeah, we did. <laughs> oh, we I did. see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, the, but yes, well done, Stephen, Twilight well done. Imperium was supposed to drop this year. However, uh, they had originally had a uh, late, uh, I think they said third quarter originally mm -hmm. uh, was supposed to be, and then it got moved to the fourth quarter, and now it's been moved to the second quarter of next year, um, mm -hmm. which that's fine. I mean, I'd much rather them send out the same quality products that they've been putting out from day one. And yeah. if it, if it needed to be delayed for for reasons, um, whether they be logistical reasons like the whole rest of the world is dealing with right now, or um, or design issues or whatever, um, I hope we have everybody has the book they want at the time they want it. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we're still waiting, but uh, hopefully they're they're working on on it. So, uh, but in the meantime, yeah, they did kind of a uh, lot of. Uh, fans to have a few products uh, on free RPG day. One was the uh, Twilight Imperium's Ashes of Power uh, adventure. Which gave nice. us a little bit of insight into the system and the races. Yeah, yeah, because we did, sure. they, they did include uh, pre-gens, so, and they do look good. The whole layout of the, those character sheets look yeah. awesome. You know, yeah. uh, if anybody from Edge Studio is listening to this, I would like uh, to suggest something to you all. There are publishers out there. There is a publisher specifically that I personally have pre-ordered books from that I have been given the opportunity to download a PDF from them <laughs> mm -hmm. and wait on the printed version of the book. I don't care about that. It just doesn't <laughs> matter. So if you would all like to, at Edge Studio, follow that pattern, yeah. I would be glad to pay for the Twilight Imperium setting book now, get a finished PDF or an alpha version of the PDF, and send me my real book when it's ready. <laughs> hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, yeah. nudge. Yeah. I would gladly have a cheeseburger today <laughs> to pay you tomorrow. Right? Yeah. Yes, I will gladly have a hamburger well, today and I'll pay you one. No, I'll pay you for the fucking hamburger today. <laughs> Give me the damn burger. Give me the buns and everything else in a fucking month or six months. Well, I don't care. Give me the I'll, I'll, now. I'll, that's what it is. I'll pay you anyway. to smell the cheeseburger today. I'll sell so it. that I can eat it later. <laughs> I'll eat it later. Yes. No, but it, it, in this day of, you know, the digital age, yeah, releasing a PDF. You know, can can be done way ahead of sending the PDF to, or the document to a printer. You know, once it once it's ready to send to a printer, that means it's ready also for fans to read, right? Exactly. <laughs> so just send you it out. Bring up already. a valid point, my friends. You bring one yeah. up. Uh, so for future, <laughs> we can get with this will help us segue into our future here. Yeah. With uh, <laughs> yeah. what we're looking forward to going forward in 2022. Um, and you know that is the Twilight Imperium book. Whether we see it in, a, if if it ends up being physically delayed again, please, folks, please, if you listen yeah. to us, think about that possibility of letting us have the PDF. Yeah. Because I know there's a whole group of people chomping at the bit to get it. Well, that's yeah. it. You know, that means people get it and they don't have to wait for shipping. <laughs> but <laughs> I can tell. I can tell um, 
fan i can tell uh, edge studio that if you offer me to buy the pdf and still physically buy the physical book i will buy both i do most likely <laughs> yeah i will do most I fans do will. yeah yeah me too guilty <laughs> yep. so what else we got coming up the pipe here stefan well um once what are you cooking year, up for us once the new year uh comes around uh it'll be my turn to do an actual play so uh this time a multi-part like you guys have done and this time will be set in the dragon star setting which is of course a a fantasy flight games uh setting they, they published way back when in the early uh, 2000s and then i've uh, adapted to genesis as best i could and uh yeah, we'll run yeah. oh i didn't know that no, how many episodes didn't. do you think that's going to take us to get through oh maybe at least three okay cool and then we'll see so Alrighty. well so you, so you guys have already played created characters sean your your son tony will uh, be joining us again yeah, the characters are already yeah, done. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing that. My character yep. seems like he's going to be a fun one. Good. Yep, definitely a fun one. I, I envision. Cool. Now we'll fill uh, out a few other episodes here and there, but mm -hmm. we have a um, we have a major announcement to make. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. Ladies and gentlemen, episode 100 is coming up in less than seven episodes mm -hmm. and it will be our final episode yes it will we mm -hmm. have decided as a group that um we will be putting finding the narrative to bed after episode 100 yes and uh it's been an amazing journey and uh we'll, we'll discuss that on episode 100 we're going to bring back all kinds of friends on episode mm -hmm. one to hang out with us and celebrate the end of the show Absolutely. Yeah. So that, yeah, that, that is seven episodes from now. So we're on 93, yeah. mm -hmm. 94. Yeah. That's seven episodes from now. So, so that's what you've got to look yeah. forward from us in 2022 coming up folks is a mm -hmm. big grand finale. Yep. That's right. Big, big grand finale, big blowout, lots of triumphs and despairs all over the place. <laughs> I'm Always. not going to guarantee my so sobriety for the episode. Mm. Uh, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> me neither me neither I'm, i might i might even be naked under my clothes during, during the show <laughs> ah that, i am not shocked by that statement i am not either <laughs> hell i'm i'm doing that right now myself stuff <laughs> awesome <laughs> but yeah it, the show uh, when when chris and i you know we started doing this back in 2017 was it um, i think so and, Maybe that's uh, when we had the concept. We started in our first episode was in 2018. I don't know, but it was a while ago, man. Yeah. And <laughs> been fun. we've done roughly 20 episodes a year, a little more than that. Mm -hmm. And it's been a great ride to talk about Genesis together with two of my closest friends. Um, I cannot say anymore that I've enjoyed every minute of it. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, but, it, it, just like some subjects you're talking about with your friends, eventually you can't beat that dead horse anymore. Uh, and as much as we love Genesis and have been talking about it for going on four years, 100, it seems like a great episode to stop talking about it. <laughs> it yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah, it does. It does. <clears throat> we'll round out the rest of our other episodes, Bob, uh, to get there we're going to get to 100 we're going to hit that milestone so whether yeah. we do uh, one shots or whether we have um, a show topic we decide we want to discuss um, we're going to fill out to 100 you're going to get every episode you ever paid for mm -hmm. um, absolutely we will give you your money's worth everyone <laughs> <laughs> we with, will with damn bonus, it. <laughs> yeah with bonus content so yeah with bonus uh, content. no boner content Oh, Ness. Ness. Yeah, yeah so we'll, we'll, have, we'll have at least three Dragon Star actual plays for Stefan, maybe a fourth one. Maybe fourth, um, depending on the story. Yeah. And then maybe a couple of, maybe another one shot, maybe a couple of other sh shows. 
-hmm. but and then we'll have then we'll have that year our party yeah episode 100 be a party and reminisce with our everybody who we've had on if we get everybody on here so if you're listening you'll be and you've been on the show gonna be contacting you yeah (laughs) or if we can't have them all in episode 100 we can always see about getting them on an earlier episode depending on that's right uh, four yeah by the way (laughs) and just looking at the history there on podbean episode your episode one officially episode one was january 23rd 2018 yeah okay and whereas episode zero was uh, january 9th yes Right and then we'll do a session that zero. That was our ses- session zero. And everybody, that's yeah. right. everybody yep. right to on. what we're going to be doing. <clears throat> so though it is sad that it is going to mm-hmm. be coming to an end, we, yeah, like Tony said. Yeah, sad. we're not, yeah, that we just made a decision, to. yeah, to, to end it. We're not pay, pod fading or just, you know, disappearing without saying anything, you know. Yeah. We're we're all still friends and nothing wrong uh, with our relationship. So uh, we just nope. decided to put the uh, we're breaking up the band. One hundred. One hundred. Band is, is just moving on to other things. Yeah, that's right. One hundred is quite a milestone too, man. It's yep. like yeah, it's cool. It's good. All 100%. right. Well, I'm looking forward to that coming in 2022, as well as our actual plays, one shots, and whatever else we do to fill her out. In the yep. meantime, I hope oh, you yeah. folks stick around till then and, uh, you know, party with us when that final episode hits. Has shed a tear like we will. I'm sure you will. Uh, oh, <laughs> one yeah. of you, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll, we'll party like it was on sale for 1999. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be it. Yep. All right. So, moving on to our next segment, then. Advantageous Friends. So. All right. Welcome to part three, Advantageous Threats. This is where we build, roll, and narrate dice results on some sample skill checks for uh, your entertainment and ours. Of course, we enjoy this part of the show as well. And this time I will be running Chris and Tony through a short little Dragon Star scenario with uh, their characters that will be making an appearance in the uh, actual play next year. So let's start with Chris. Which Who are you playing? I am playing Udo. He is a um, he is a brass half dragon barbarian. He's a hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is uh, he's been um, joined this crew, and right. he's um just kind of making his way making his way through the. The verse, I guess. Don't know Dragon Star too much, but making him making it through the verse yeah. a bit. Um, you know, I mean, he he practices with his vibro sword pretty much all the time. He's right. Pretty, he likes to Keeping a it. lot, but he Keeping is he's kind of a simpleton. You know, he does. He's fairly ignorant when it comes to the bigger world things or universe right. stuff. So, so he's he new a realized, little bit, maybe to the Empire. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Could be. Um. He's got a lot of um, backwater survival hunter skills that he's going to try and bring to the table here. Very good. Very good. And Tony, what is your character like? I will be playing Rungo Flack, also known as Cookie. He's the ship's cook <laughs> on board this mercenary vessel we've signed on to. Um, he's a monk. He has spent most of his life in solitude. Um, he comes from a race called Oryx. Oryx are usually between eight and a half and ten feet tall. Uh, have they're they're basically bigger than average orcs and much more savage. Rungo doesn't seem to be that way. It's not mm-hmm. as savage as most Oryx you would see. Um, keeps his long black hair 
tied in a top knot, a samurai top knot. Um, there's a gold ring uh, in his uh, nose and uh, keeps his tusks nice and clean and shiny mm. uh, and is usually decked out in his traditional martial arts gi. Um, he has dreams and aspirations of someday uh, applying to and appearing on the Adamantium Chef competition mm-hmm. and uh, winning it. Um, he wants to become a galaxy-renowned sushi chef. Uh, and in the meantime, if he has to thunk some skulls to get through life, um, he'll do so. <laughs> Whatever's needed to to achieve his dreams and enlightenment. That's right. <laughs> nice. All right. So you two are on on the, sta- uh, the asteroid space station called Gullibdur Drift. Uh, okay. This in the Dragon Star Empire. It's it looks very much from the scene at the beginning of Rogue One, the rings of Kafreen. So a huge rock asteroid on top and bottom with lots of structure uh, linking the two. It's both a mining colony and trading port way station between the core of the throne worlds and the outer territories. And uh, Cookie was uh, undercover as a cook for a local chef because he was supposed to meet uh, an informant that his mercenary group uh, was supposed to uh, to protect and bring back uh, to uh, to their headquarters. And for some reason, he's now the care, care, caretaker of this greenish uh, and and black striped uh, ferret-like critter with six legs. Uh, It seems to have been hurt uh, and he he feels very close to it and seems like he should be protecting it. And Udo was also on the station just uh, minding his own business when uh, over the comms you heard that uh, Cookie's cover was blown. There's some ISPD agents uh, on the station that uh, may have been looking for him. Uh, ISPD means Imperial Security and Protectorate uh, Department. Think uh, kind of a Secret Service uh, slash uh, SS kind of uh, arm of the military. Okay. But instead of white white armor, black and red uh, armor, uh, so you're trying to get Cookie uh, out of the restaurant and back to your ship's berth and away from the station before the ISPD squads cut you off. Okay. So we'll run this a little bit like a uh, a skilled challenge. Okay. And uh, slash chase. Cool. <clears throat> So it says here <clears throat> that we've managed to meet up in this busy market plaza. So are we talking, mm-hmm. are we yeah. in the plaza or have I kind of gone into the restaurant where he was no, back he had alley to, where kind of, just had, to kind of, kind of wrap my head around this. Yeah. 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 No, he had to leave the restaurant cook. He had to uh, get out okay. of the restaurant with his little ferret uh, friend. You don't know where that ferret came from, but. Um, so we're kind of out the front door, boom, the front door. in the market. I'm there. He's there. Yeah, you're not in the <clears throat> full-blown middle of the market. You're slightly on the periphery. There yeah, are some God. alleys and back alleys and nooks and, and alley- ways around. There's lots of machinery, tubings, el- you know, elevator tubes up and down for cargo and personnel. Uh, so the, uh, lots of steam and noise and things floating around. Um, you know, okay. anti-gravity signs and, uh, and droids as well so as we were just told that mm-hmm. the squad is here we haven't necessarily seen them because we probably haven't made our <laughs> our perception checks yet <laughs> no, <do> that. <laughs> but ma- make a perception check yes you can both make perception checks these okay. guards are obviously are in full armor uh with some weapons, not tripped out with uh, full assault weapons. So what I, heaviest, 
but they are there very apparent. So it would be an so average Udo tech. Looks like, so what Udo looks like, he basically has like a long kind of a leather duster type of thing because he's got a he's got a shotgun that he's got slung over his shoulder on the inside of it. Right. And he does have his vibro sword. Now, are vibro swords, are those like lightsabers or are those like a sword that have a a vibro edge to it so it would be in a yeah. scabbard probably on his back yeah that's maybe? more it yeah that's, that's more, more it. it's a, okay. a, a solid metal sword Pardon. with a, a technology that makes it vibrate yep. at high cool. speed yep. cool, cool. okay okay difficulty right. of our perception check sir would be average they're not really yeah. trying to hide but there's a lot of stuff in between you and them possibly that could uh, block okay. does um does being Nine foot tall help give me an advantage over the crowd. <laughs> yeah, you so asking for a boost die? <laughs> well, duh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yes, a boost dice. <laughs> Does I'm a silhouette six. too. Give me a boost die. Is what I'm <laughs> no, that's well, yes, because of that that gives you that boost dice, but also right. give you a setback dice because all the intervening obstacles uh, might be making it difficult to uh, to spot them as they're maybe moving. Why Did they do notice you? Everybody hang a sign at eyeball level. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm All right. rolling. And I'm only uh, six six and only silhouette one, so I'm not gonna take that boost die. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm rolling it. Are you okay with me rolling it? Yep. Yep. All right. Zero success is one advantage. <clears throat> okay, All I'm right. gonna roll mine. I've got one yellow, two green, two purple, and a blick. A setback bay. I take my advantage and just say that maybe I instinctively am ducking so they can't they have a setback right. die to see me. All right. Mm-hmm. That's how yeah, I have All right. yeah, I I had a I had no no successes, but I had two advantage. So um <clears throat> what I'd like to do is um though well, maybe... I did fail fail to see them maybe could i use the two advantage to maybe see maybe a a clear path through the crowd um maybe to give us maybe an advantage or a or a one of us a set a boost die on our next check to kind of uh, get through the crowd maybe yeah that could help yeah. to find uh yeah that could definitely help to find and maybe with uh uh, cookies advantage even though you didn't spot anything maybe you heard someone saying did you see the, those ispd agents oh no not ispd agents yeah so it's confirmed it's confirmed yeah okay and though you haven't seen them yeah someone has spoken loud enough and uh, you spotted uh, at least one possible route of escape okay. from the marketplace without having going through the middle of the marketplace and risk being spotted so maybe yeah a boost dice that uh that can help you and uh cookie all right i'm gonna tuck my little green fen friend into the front of my kimono all right well uh, well well shit, cookie, let, we gotta go this way cookie come on let's go all right, let's lead go. the way follow me all right all right so you guys make a we'll start with a stealth check Okay. Versus their uh, perception. Perception. Their highest, yes, their highest perception. It's his skill of perception. Who be this guy here? Now, would we get a boost die to this because of the crowd? Uh, you you had enough advantage to give yourself one for me. Okay. You, yeah, but I'd give you one. Difficulty? Okay. Difficulty will be three purple. Hard check. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one of the, their perception is three, so uh, for the highest character. Um, I would like to use a um, <clears throat> one of the story points in this situation here, um, All right. because I am trying to get my large friend <laughs> out. <laughs> And right. he's, uh, he's, needless to say, stands out in a crowd, <laughs> literally, <laughs> in a way. My bright red skin and <laughs> big ass fucking black top knot, 
nine feet up. <laughs> yeah. That that might impose a uh, setback. <laughs> Along on with him. the boost dice. On the his, yeah. stick out on a little bit. Can't help it. Okay. All right. Um, do you want to make yours first or you want me to make mine? Go ahead. You're leading the way. Okay. Yeah, I'll lead the way then. Here we go. Okay. I did succeed. Oh, I just got I just got a success. One success. Right. Success. Nothing right. to help you there, bud, but All right. One success. Jim, are you happy with my pool? Uh, yep. Go ahead. Oh, so I've got two story points on my side. All right. So I had five successes and three threat. Ooh. Holy fudge nuggets. Nice. All right, so you definitely managed to get some to get out of sight without these ISPD agents uh, spotting you. Cool. Uh, now, and following I have an a little idea bit of my threat. Uh, okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I had some uh, ideas, but maybe yours is better. Well, we, what we did is we ducked down a side alley, and in order mm -hmm. to block the side alley, I actually pick up and move a dumpster in front of the alley. And in process of doing so, really tweaked my back. And I, I if you want right. to upgrade my next physical check or uh, add uh, a difficulty die or however you want to do that mechanically, give me uh, wounds, whatever. Well, uh, for threats, maybe at least uh, use one one of them for a strain on you okay. as you pull it. And the two other ones, it it makes a bit of noise as it creaks. Uh, you know, drawing some attention from people around it, which might draw the attention of the the agents. Gotcha. Maybe not right away, but at least. So, okay. so now we've started. Okay, so you're kind of aware this the ISPD agents may be tuned to what's going on. Uh, so I guess now we we'll, we can maybe start to see a, a little bit more of a the beginning of a chase. You're at medium range of. Uh, of the squad. Okay. So a reasonable amount of successes versus the, the fuse. Um, what would you guys think? Uh, or the two of us? Um, yeah, I don't want to say it too high either. What do you think? Nine successes before three failed checks. Yeah, I was thinking eight and three, nine and three sound good to me. Okay, we'll go with nine, right. nine and three. Cool. Okay, the fuse three. Great. And six. All right. Sounds good. Oh, we'll go with eight. Eight will be fine. So eight versus three. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to make too much of a fuss about the approved skills or not. We'll, we'll, we'll muddle through and see if it's appropriate or not. If you guys give me a good reason, it'll, it'll be average. If not, it'll be hard. Okay. Okay. In a chase scene like this, I get it. Yep. Go yeah. On. So. Okay. So we'll call this now round one. Okay. All right. This one, well, I guess this one was round zero. Zero. I'm up front. <clears throat> since yeah. I'm up front, you know what? I think I'm gonna use athletics. I'm gonna try to get. I'm I'm picturing athletics being more of a sprinting down the alleyway putting more mm -hmm. distance between them and us you know it's right. probably a long alleyway we're just booking it right yeah <clears throat> even if it's a long alley it's not just narrow with uh bare alley there's always kind of stuff protruding probably people doing, coming in, in and crossing mm -hmm. things moving across it uh, automatic yep. droids carrying cargo whatever yep yep there's all kinds of possible obstacles or things to hide behind or to trip you up you never know all right so i'll do <laughs> athletics and that'll be an all average right. check then right yeah we can do an average yeah okay so that'll be yellow two green and two purple mm -hmm. right now on that um let's see because there's all okay. kinds of stuff going on i'll make it like a little bit of difficult terrain not impeding not slowing down your movement but simply uh, mechanically adding a, a setback dice set one setback dice. okay all right. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. I'll I'll do that in the next round. All right. Okay. Uh, there we go. Go Let's ahead. See. Okay. Well, that would be two successes, one threat. Ooh. Two successes already. We're only already on two successes. That's good. <laughs> but some <clears throat> threat. All right. One threat. Yep. Just one threat. So. Okay, so you bump into someone, uh, still manage to make some progress, but they they drop uh, their uh, their container of mechanical parts. It makes lot, lots of noise, possibly attracting some attention from nearby. Ooh, okay. I'll maybe make a, a setback to your next one. Okay, I'll, get, I'll leave that out then. All right. Mm. Cookie. I am going to be using my um, Kung Fu right. to do a front flip axe kick into a steam line uh, okay. on the way passing through the alley, the steam line that's going above head, to break the thing and have it shoot steam into the alleyway to give us cover. Ah, right. Awesome. For our escape. Maybe even... I don't know. You know what? I'm going to flip a story point and say it's not steam, that it's toxic vapor. Ooh. Okay. So all the story points are on my side now. Yes. <laughs> so all right. Um, this will be a brawl check. Standard coded normal okay. difficulty. Uh, yeah. Anything you want to do to it? I oh, will spend a story point to upgrade. And I add a advantage for my Tavern Brawler ability, nice. uh, which gives Quite me a, a single advantage on brawl checks and combat checks use improvised weapons. Gotcha. So, and uh, yeah, so I'm looking at two yellow, two green, a purple and a red, and a free advantage. Right, go ahead. All right, so I had one success, two advantages. Success, two advantages, that's good. So I that's would right. like the, to use the two advantage mm -hmm. um, to give anyone passing through that area a setback die as the caustic fumes burn their eyes. Okay. Any pursuers that may be coming, particularly right. the first one. Right. Mm -hmm. Since it's two okay. advantage, I can name my target. <clears throat> I don't know my targets, but I'll say the first enemy to pass through there right. is setback die on the resilience check. All right, sounds good. Or perception Sweet. checks, whatever. That's it. Even even if they have a helmet that's full face, you know, some of the vapors are affecting the sheen or uh, cover, fogging it all up, or nice making a plastic bubble a little bit warp. That works. All right, so now we'll have one of the bad guys that you may not have been aware of. She'll, she or they, sorry, will uh, try and uh, help out her uh, her squad. And okay. all right, it won't take away any of your successes, but she'll she does succeed at least with four successes. She's using her streetwise to uh, to see about. Uh, Hearing about where you guys are, maybe someone has seen or heard or, or heard about you, and she does pick up uh, chatter about uh, a half dragon and a huge orc in the vicinity, giving her allies a, a heads up on maybe the, your your where your rough whereabouts. Cool. Oh no, someone knows our wear boots. Wear yeah, boots. boots. That's right, wear <laughs> boots. <laughs> uh, All right, so that's her action. And by doing that, she kind of reveals a little bit of her uh, 
your own location. You can swear it's someone wearing, of course, uh, some kind of dark uh, duster uh, with a wide-brimmed hat, and you can swear underneath the, the in the shade of that hat is white hair and dark black slash purple skin and pointed ears like crap. The drow, which are very prominent members of the ISPD. <laughs> uh oh, drow, drow. All right, so that would be the first round one. I said now then round two. Who wants to go first on round two? Uh, I'll yeah. go. Go for it. Okay, I'd so say we... that since I am. Um, kind of still in the blast of this chemical coming out of these pipes and everything that mm -hmm. I would like to, um, I have to take off at a full sprint and I normally would take a deep breath before doing that. But in or in this case, I'm sprinting forward, but I'm holding my breath. So it seems like either resilience or an athletics check. What do you think, Steph? Uh, I think resilience would be a good, okay. If you're trying to, uh, to sprint through some more from that vapor. Without yeah. inhaling it. Resilience it is, then. All right. Difficulty, sir? Well, we'll make it uh, hard. It's oh, all kinds of atmospheres, and the scrubbers in here might not be uh, as as up-to-date or uh, replaced as often as they should. Okay. And uh, you, you do have a story point on your side, too. So. Okay. Well, I am... I think I'm happy with what I'm gonna got here. I've got one yellow, three green, and versus three purple. I'm pretty happy with those. So. All right, so go ahead. Three successes, straight up. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. So Purple. I hold my breath and I lower my head and I chug along with big gaping strides, catching up to Udo. Right, so you've made it to another part of uh, the station. Uh, you pretty much left the marketplace behind. Uh, you're now in some access tunnels. There's still lots of people around going from one section to another. Vehicles, like hover vehicles or almost like monorail vehicles on one side, <laughs> zipping by, even overhead. Okay. And ev even under you, it's like a... There's like a... Uh, a very large uh, multi-person bridge with, a, like I said, a monorail on one side and other hover vehicles uh, above and below. And your, uh, your your ship berth is on the other side of this bridge. You can make it to the other side without uh, being either spotted or just ahead of, uh, of them. Uh, so we'll go with the... The other other bad guy, the bad guys, see if uh, they've spotted you or caught up with uh, the news that uh, the draw may have uh, given given them. So I will just roll for the the commander of the the troops. Okay. See if he can do a leadership with his troops. See if he can ga gather them up. And I'll spend a story point to upgrade that. I've got a green and, a, and two, uh, no, a green and a yellow for upgrade. And make it at least an, whoops, that's a dice. That's an average difficulty for him. Versus our stealth or no, or you just uh, skill challenge yeah, on their side or what? Yeah, just an average, just like I did for you guys, an average uh, for your average or hard, depending. Uh, it was just a perception, which was uh, opposed. But this is, uh, he's just trying not to get opposed. his troopers. And not, this one's oh. not opposed, just trying to get oh, his Oh, that's troop. right, it's leadership, I'm sorry. <clears throat> his leadership. So with the two advantage that is a uh, draw ally, I will give them a boost, one boost. Can we get to the leader? So I got a green, a red, a green. A yellow, a blue, and two purple. And I already upgrade once. You guys now have two story points. You 
want to oh, upgrade yeah. my difficulty. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah Def- upgrade All his right. difficulty. For the sheer All fact right. that there are a lot of people on this station that aren't necessarily hey. trusting of the ISPD, they're going to yeah. make his efforts more difficult. Exactly. Oh, with yeah. different, and with various races, who knows, maybe something looks like a like Cookie and Udo rolling by. That's right. <laughs> All right, so let's go do it. So, oops. There you go. Purple and red. There you go. I removed the wrong dice. There. And oh, he fails to uh to properly get his his men uh out of the marketplace, but he does have three advantages. So from the talk, he knows on which bridge that uh he just needs to get this through this parade of of religious worshippers that are going going through uh <laughs> That are slowly chanting uh, across his path. <laughs> nice. He's debating on whether to shoot them through, but he doesn't. Ha- he has orders not to uh, to make too much of a of a scene. So he's just trying to use non-lethal methods, <laughs> which means stun batons are being pulled out. <laughs> okay. All right, that was round full round two, round three now. No, uh, I must- haven't gone yet. I haven't oh, gotten sorry. round two yet, so. Oh, I thought, um, you, I thought you did. Sorry so, about that. Let's, no, let's no. go for it. No, so what I would like to do, and I'm not sure whether this is a deception check or a skullduggery check, but I would really like to use my breath weapon to mm. create an, a, a distraction of some sort, maybe creating a dumpster fire mm. that's kind of maybe non-lethal there, doesn't maybe catch everything on fire, but basically enough to just cause a distraction and i'm okay. not sure how hard it will be and what skill to use i'm thinking deception but in this case yeah I maybe out of deception. I, I, I was thinking maybe deception deception would be good maybe yeah, there's a a kind of a random uh, robot that's pushing some uh, a large large like dumpster uh on a hover dolly of refuse to be moved to the uh Recycling center. Maybe they're com- maybe, a, maybe they're coming. Maybe they're coming across the bridge or something. I don't know. Just yeah, to kind of set like, it on fire, just to kind that of would cause a be, distraction. Oh, that would definitely okay. be appropriate. Okay. Now, it's actually an, an ability that I. So it's actually an ability that I have. So was that a a boost die, two boost die that I can add to this? Maybe with uh, the whole. With well, my breath weapon thing or no? Yeah, I like it. That's a two boost dice nice because some of the stuff two, in there could be <laughs> very easily flammable and smoking. <laughs> so, All right. So I do have a all, setback it's die. Stinky, so. I do have a setback die from my you gave me a setback right. die on my next check. Right. Um so my cunning is um my deception is I don't have any ranks in it, but it's just a cunning of three. Mm-hmm. Um now is this a hard check or an average check? Well, probably we'll av- probably hard. I would average? say average. Okay. So that's what I've uh, got. Um, but I will, I will upgrade. <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Look, because there could be me. fire. There could be something explosive in there. That's yeah, right. <laughs> now you have that two story is... points on your side if you want. Okay. Oh, I did. Ha- oh, we did have one on ours. You did have. Oh one hell on yeah! Ours. There, there, there could be a chance for a triumphant despair here. Let's see. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So back to. One player story point and two uh, GM story points. Okay, not a triumphant despair, but or despairing. We do triumph. have we do have three successes though. All right. Yep, so, three yeah. successes on it. So between so you quickly just breathe, fire, just inhale real quick, <sighs> nice thin thin stream just ignites. Uh, whole uh, line of liquid and other paper products and other uh, items create lots of smoke and of course you know, now there's a little the orange lights that were all on the corners are flashing even faster now of, of that uh, little uh, hover dolly as the droid or robot uh, because they do have robots they don't call them droids they just call them drones or robots okay. uh, they have basic intelligence usually not true AIs uh, AIs are not impossible in Dragon Star that's another matter. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's it swerves a little bit, creating lots of uh, of a smoke screen. So you oh, guys cool. now have your eight, even more. You have nine uh, successes. Those three okay. yeah, successes. 
and yeah, the uh, the ISPD agents are just you know now forced to help with the uh, the, the fire control because they're the the closest say authority. <laughs> <laughs> So I would like, since we passed with an extra success, I would like to yep. show up when him and I kind of rendezvous right on the other side of that dumpster. Mm-hmm. Some of the um, food carts for this religious festival were sitting out, yeah. and I pick up a couple of uh, snacks, three of them to be precise, uh, one which is a large um, skewered piece of lizard meat uh, for myself, another which is a um, like a a small bit of like bird flesh that is mm-hmm. uh, cooked in some sort of plum sauce, mm-hmm. um, but it's it's shaped like their religious icon. Okay. Uh, and uh, I hand that to Udo, and then this tiny little sucker I will kind of shove down inside my kimono to the little green right. guy that I've got there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. He takes that up, eats it. He seems to have not eaten in a while, and he gobbles it all up. And you get onto the ship. Hachu, your little cobalt machinist, uh, greets you. He's like, "Ah, oh, the comms were all all over the place. What's what, what was going on? I was you're so, you're surprised. Late you guys to made the party it again. Always I, late to party. I, I was just making sure you got here. I was on backup. Captain said, "Stay here. Just monitor the activity." Oh well, you're here, and you got our contact. Oh, good. Here, you want... Oh, wait, little, no, you're a little lizard man. Probably you should not eat this. This is probably cannibal. No, no, no. I don't want to eat. This is our contact. I am, he's, he's shorter than I thought. <laughs> and as your your the hatch closes like clamshell kind of thing, bottom and par- <laughs> top part, you pan, let's say, to the camera inside the station on, on another gantry a little higher above the bridge you were on is that uh, dark-skinned woman with her hat and just looking down at the ship and then looking down at her uh, ISP troopers and just shaking her head like <sighs> incompetence. Well, I'll have to discipline them. And end scene as your ship leaves. Gallop der drift. <laughs> Very nice. Awesome. Well done, Stefan. That was great, dude. <laughs> and as you... Yeah, and as you leave the station, your little ferret. Uh, once you're sitting in the uh, the, uh, the mess hall, uh, he sort of shimmers, shakes, and suddenly it's this gnome uh, in a in a brown trench coat with uh, all his gear, a laser, a fairly advanced laser pistol, suddenly you know strapped to his back, bare feet, uh, and looks around. Oh. Never thought I'd make it off that station. Hi. I don't think I've ever smuggled a gnome inside my kimono before. This is an unusual situation. It must be pondered. And I will walk towards the kitchen. (laughs) Uh, Well, welcome aboard. (laughs) Come on. Hi, I'm Worsk. I'm, my name is Co- my is Coben Worsk. I'm both I, I'm a spy and a druid. Is that the spuid? No, a druid. <laughs> I specialize in shape changing. No, it's no it. I think I think it's more dry than anything. Uh, he's not very dry anymore. He was uh, that's very sweaty in kimono. <laughs> no, a druid a druid spy would be dry. He said he was spy druid, so it's a spry. <laughs> <laughs> or a spruid. <laughs> uh, all right, end scene. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that was our advantageous <laughs> section of the show. More to come in the actual play. <laughs> yep. Can't wait. <laughs> all right, let's uh, end this thing. Yeah. I think. That little gnome was the character you created for my Dragon Star uh, book there, um, Chris. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, cool dude. <laughs> oh awesome. Oh that's oh that's oh that's right. I remember yeah. that now. Oh sweet yeah. dude. Yep. Cool. Cool. All right.
All right, everybody, that is our show, our end of the year show for this year, tonight, this year, 2021. Um, our next show in a couple weeks, we're going to be continuing our actual plays with Stefan, leading Tony, myself, and Sean, Tony's son, through his uh, through an adventure he has in the Dragon Star setting, and it's called Between the rock i mean a rock and a hard place <laughs> so uh looking forward to that dude yep yep so you guys got a, a little bit of, bit of a prelude to that and cool. got to got to stretch your legs with your your new characters mm-hmm. oh, we yeah. did i look fl- i look forward to playing a sushi chef yeah <laughs> <laughs> who wouldn't <laughs> And I and I look forward to playing a a clueless barbarian hunter in space. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I know Sean is looking forward to his cobalt trap master. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's that'll be great. <sighs> and right. I'm looking forward to to see, to seeing how many times they can ask for boost dice and for what they can ask boost dice for. <laughs> uh, I'm doing my jaw exercises now. Yeah. Right. Challenge accepted, <laughs> Stefan. Challenge yeah. accepted. Yep. <laughs> you asked for it. All right. Uh, do you have? Do we have any listener feedback? Did we find that? Found an email or the Facebook? Well, we just drew? Yep. Yep. We do have some feedback. Uh, not in the emails, unfortunately. But uh, as Tony pointed out earlier, um, uh, one of our listeners, Terry Hansen, on Facebook, on our Facebook page, uh, had replied. Uh, a comment to our uh, Genesis on easy mode. And uh, it goes like this. So fantastic episode. I have ran Star Wars once for my kids and they loved it. Over Christmas, I plan on running a homebrew sci-fi game for my 10-year-old son. We came up with, uh, came up with uh, something about a war between Earthlings and Saturnites at, as the setting. Also, I'm starting a role-playing club at the high school I work at. The kids are primarily D and D, you know, D Shift Seven D players. Uh, I was torn between Savage Worlds and Genesis to shake things up. This episode helped Gen- Genesis for the win. Awesome. Uh, so I think I will run some Keyforge, something totally different than D and D. Wow, that's awesome, Terry. And uh, best of luck to that with you and your endeavor. And I hope. You and all the kids have great fun with that. I oh, can't yeah. remember what episode it was when we made those species from Keyforge. Sounds mm. like you can make your Saturnites from using that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. What are Saturnites? Who the fuck knows? Um, Saturn is well, a big gas ball, isn't it? Yeah, a big ball of gas with rings around it. <laughs> yeah. Could very well be like my race that I rolled up the mm. energy beings with psychic powers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> In a. Snow globe? Is that what he was? <laughs> yeah, he was, was he in a snow globe? around in a snow globe or something. I can't remember. <laughs> That's <laughs> so long ago. I've slept since then. <laughs> well, thanks great. for writing us, Terry. That's awesome. Yes. I hope yes. uh, I hope that goes well for you. Um, your kids love their uh, session of Genesis that you're um, – I'm curious to know if you guys are using the setting generator or the uh, the race – the species generators from Keyforge when doing that. If you could give us some more feedback on that uh, in a follow-up, that'd be great. Yeah, and awesome. Then, and yeah, uh, tell us how your uh, how your uh, Genesis game with the kids on uh, the school goes. So yeah, we are very happy to hear that one of our episodes uh, inspired uh, inspired this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, so if you want, you can reach out to us uh, and send that information to us at findingnarrativepodcast at gmail dot com. You can get a hold of Stefan and myself like you did before at uh, Finding Narrative on Facebook. We're all three still on Mayway. Um, and can be reached there individually or together. And um, we have our Twitter presence at FTN underscore Genesis, and that would be uh, Stefan's forte. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can uh, listen to us and tell your friends too at uh, Finding the Narrative Podcast, Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, Amazon Music, and more. And I do want to add this little caveat here at the end of this, that when we do set, we did say we will be ending the show at episode 100, the show will still be available. All the backlog, all of the Podbean episodes, the iTunes, all that stuff will still be held up. We're going to keep those up indefinitely. 
So they're not yeah. going anywhere if you need to listen to old back episodes or you haven't caught up. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. It's Tony awesome. saying, let's tell a story. It's been story point. And this is Stefan Zay. Dare to ask for those boost eyes, just like my colleagues do. <laughs> and this is Chris telling you to remember the rule of cool. Get out of the fucking way when your nine foot tall monk friend opens up. <laughs> <laughs> um what do you call it uh canisters of whatever the fuck he wants to kick open um and just have fun doing it <laughs> so good night everyone and good happy night. new year happy Woo-hoo! new genesis year cheers and beers finding the narrative a genesis rpg podcast is not affiliated with or endorsed by any companies mentioned on this show Any of the products mentioned on our show or appear on our website are the property and copyright of their respected owners. All items are used under fair use and educational and review purposes. All other items are the intellectual property of Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.